Are you wondering how to resolve the little funky spots, little specks and things that are floating across your eyes? As we age, we actually develop these things called eye floaters. Today, I wanna to share with you four ways to address eye floaters from a natural perspective. I'm also sharing some data and some clinical research that shows there are natural ways to resolve eye floaters despite maybe what your eye doctor is telling you. As a contact wearer since the age of 14, I've had multiple conversations with different eye doctors and eye specialists, and all of them will say, there's no way you can resolve eye floaters. That is absolutely not true, and I'm going to show you why. Let's go. Eye floaters are not just on the minimal side annoying, but on a more severe side, they can be obstructive to your eyesight. And most importantly, they are a sign of some nutritional deficiencies and imbalances in your body that we need to address. As promised, I'm gonna share with you four assorted supplements and foods to get into your daily diet that will enhance the effect of minimizing floaters in your eyes. But I also wanna share with you, before we go there, I wanna share with you two things we need to address and avoid to support your eye health and to lower the risk and the cause of eye floaters. So number one, if you are a regular caffeine consumer, whether it's decaf or caffeinated coffee and even some caffeinated teas, caffeine for some reason enhances the oxidative stress to the eye, partially because of its vascular impact. So caffeine kind of ramps up our central nervous system. We get blood flow and we notice the effect of caffeine and making our, our bodies jittery. Well, we see the effect in more prominent presence of eye floaters. Doesn't necessarily mean that we change or reduce the quantity, but they're more present and visible. And that visibility leads to our second thing that we need to address is inflammation, systemic overall inflammation in your body, but specifically, the space where the floaters lie are between our lens and our retina. Between this space is where the eye floaters are. It's this jelly-like substance. It's actually made up of collagen, water, and hyaluronic acid. And the floaters themselves are basically a kind of clumping of the collagen. And that clumping effect is caused by an assortment of oxidative stress. So inflammation, systemic inflammation, inflammation in your eye, inflammation in your vascular channel, i.e. diabetes, prediabetes, high cortisol stress, that causes oxidative stress. And we see the net effect of oxidative stress breaking down this middle jelly part, the vitreous part of our eye between our lens and our retina. And that is where the eye floaters are coming from. That's a very simplified explanation, but knowing that you can cut your caffeine and we need to address inflammation, that leads us into why these four items I'm going to share with you now are highly effective because they're all going to address the inflammatory factors that are causing oxidative stress, breaking down this jelly-like substrate, if you will, between your lens and your retina and creating eye floaters. So number one, to really help reduce the quantity and the overwhelm of eye floaters on your eyes is to increase your bromelain intake. Now bromelain, you probably hear me talk a lot about that. It's up there with my ginger and turmeric as anti-inflammatory, but bromelain is found in pineapple. And there's an actual clinical study about eye health and patients who consume pineapple, but overall bromelain is an anti-inflammatory. And it also has this really unique way as an enzyme to break down certain particulates that are, that are causing angst within our body. And that is where we're seeing a lot of the research specifically to bromelain and eye health being beneficial. Bromelain we also use when there's bruising, vascular issues, swelling and inflammation. And when we have oxidative stress in our eyes, there's going to be that net effect. So bromelain is number one. You can eat pineapple, you can take bromelain supplementation. I personally like to start off my day with a little cup of pineapple juice. You can juice it on your own or grab from the store. Just be mindful that a lot of the juices and even dried, dehydrated pineapple is gonna be really dense in sugar. Just be forewarned. The second powerful antioxidant for your eye health is going to be a compound called hesperidin. And we find this often in grapeseed extract. And grapeseed extract is also another one of these clinically researched for eye floater health. And the good news is you can supplement with grapeseed extract 
in a capsule or even a tablet form. Grapeseed extract is actually well studied and documented for eye floaters. And overall, hesperidin is what we consider vitamin P. It is a bioflavonoid that is super, super power punch with antioxidants that can target oxidative stress and free radical damage that is breaking up that jelly-like structure in between the lens and the retina, which is causing the collagen fiber clusters that we register and see as floaters moving through our eyes. The third supplement I recommend is an Ayurvedic herbal. It's called Amla. Amla is from a particular fruit, a gooseberry, and this is a really, really high, super heavy hit of vitamin C. Vitamin C is essential as an antioxidant, but it also is really a core factor and building block to collagen. When we're talking about the collagen fibers that are breaking down, ultimately as we age, we're gonna develop more and more uh, of these collagen fibers. Basically, they're, they're breaking off and we see them as floaters. Well, that is a collagen issue, and AMLA is a really good preventative and precursory building block to keeping your collagen structure strong and supple. And that leads me to number four, and I've talked a lot about the benefits of collagen, but this is really important. One of the things that we see as we age, and sometimes you know, t changes in our diet, and, and a lack of eating good, healthy collagen on a daily basis is a deficiency in collagen. Collagen keeps our skin, our soft tissue, and other tissue structures in the body, including bones, healthy and supple. And we have these structures that we need to keep strong and supple. Well, the vitreous breakdown of, these, of the collagen in this jelly it's partly due to a reduction in the strength of collagen. So the fourth thing that we want to add is healthy collagen. I recommend two things here. I love to recommend making your own bone broth. That's one of the best ways you can get natural collagen into your body by you know, boiling up for a long period of time or simmering or you know, in your kind of pressure pot, adding in bone marrow, throwing in a whole bunch of vegetables and some mushrooms and some rooted herbs like turmeric and ginger and even garlic. But overall, you can make your own bone broth and you can supplement with collagen. My favorite collagen that I use personally every day is a collagen by Organics. It's our clean sourced organic collagen powder. Collagen powder is a great alternative if you're like, I don't wanna fiddle around with bone brothing and making my own. And by the way, you can buy bone broth in the frozen section, but I like to combine both. I like to have a collagen powder that has a, an array, a multi-blend of collagens. There are over 26 collagen types out there and food first. So that's one reason why I recommend having bone broth on hand. I personally recommend for patients and use in my own life, I will use bone broth as a water alternative. So for instance, if I'm steaming vegetables, I don't add water, I use bone broth to do my steam. It infuses all the goodness in there and it soaks it in. The other thing I'll do is if we are making like quinoa or farro or you know our, our lentil uh, pasta, I will use bone broth as my boiling agent. And so it just infuses it into those noodles or the, the grain that we're eating. So the question of the day, friends, is what type of eye floaters are you experiencing? Do you notice, especially if you're a woman, that your eye floater experience changes throughout your menstrual cycle. This is really common and it's something, it's frustrating. I don't feel like there's enough scientific research about this, but I know in my own life and even with my patients that do suffer from eye floaters, they notice changes that are cyclical to hormones. And obviously hormones play a big role in oxidative stress and inflammation. So that's something that might be a topic in future videos if you're interested in, but definitely any questions, comment down below and I'll use your questions specifically for a video topic in the near future. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you give this a like, hit that follow button, and help me on my mission to reach 1 million subscribers to get the word out that natural health and wellness can help address a lot of root causes of illness and disease, and it's an easier, more holistic approach to medicine. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on our next video.